fellow Diamond Painting Addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today to share with you how I think I'm going to fix this canvas. This is my double-sided adhesive from Diamond Painting Deutschland. I shared with you in the unboxing that there are some rivers in the tape as, long, as well as some puckers along the canvas. I'm going to cut off all the excess canvas so I can just work with what I need to and I will speed through that and be right back. So it might look like I'm cutting close to the edge, but I'm cutting close to the edge of the cover sheet. The actual edge of the canvas is still another good quarter inch on the inside at least. So I just need to cut this long side off. I'm not quite sure why there's such a long wide margin on one side and not the other, but I need to cut that off just so it doesn't take up as much room on my dining room table or my workspace and get cut all the way through that. And then once I get all the way to the top, I can work on cutting off this schematic at the top. So now I can, I got to be a little bit more careful because it's so close to the edge, but I'm going to cut off the schematic at the top. It's so large that I just, I don't refer to it much anyway. So I'm just going to carefully cut it off of the top here. I will keep it so that I have it for reference if I need it. But I also already have the inventory sheet that I can use and I'm going to have all the stickers on my containers. So I don't necessarily need it, but I'm gonna keep it at least while I'm working on it just in case I need it for reference. I'm gonna cut off this big side here and then I can just keep it. So now that I have all the excess cut off, I can start working on the places underneath where I've got rivers. So peeling this back, I'm gonna be using some tools to help me get rid of those. And that is, I'm gonna use my flashlight. You might see it on film, but it's gonna be a little harder for me to see. So I grabbed a fat flashlight so I could see where the rivers were. I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife and use those to cut and release the tension. And then after I do that, I will go over it with either my scraper or my brayer and get rid of those puckers. So using my X-Acto knife, you can see all the little rivers here across the screen. And I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna make small little kind of diagonal slashes across all of these puckers. And I'm actually gonna actually hear the air releasing as I'm cutting through this. As I release this trapped air underneath the tape, I've actually done this before on a much smaller canvas. So that's why I wasn't overly worried about cutting these lines on this particular canvas, even though it is quite large. It's not really these small lines that worry me so much. Again, it's just these little slices and I'm not cutting all the way through the tape. I'm just cutting through these little puckers. What I'm really worried about is the large puckers on the back where the canvas is bunched up underneath where the air is kind of trapped and the tape is not actually adhered. Now that I've finished making all the small little cuts, I can put the cover sheet back down and then I'm going to go over it with my little scraper here. And I'm pressing quite firmly so that I can try and get all of that trapped air out from underneath where I made all those little cuts. So now I can pull the cover back, look at where all the little rivers were, and I can run my finger over them to see if I actually got all the trapped air out. My finger is sticking a little bit to the tape, but that's okay. As I run my finger over, I can feel where there's still air so I can take my knife and go back in and make some additional cuts so that I can release all of that trapped air. So more cutting, and then once I'm done with the cutting, I need to put the cover sheet back down, go over it with the scraper again, again trying to push out all of that air, and I'm push pushing pretty firmly to make sure that I'm getting all of that trapped air out from underneath where I just made all of those cuts and then pick up the cover sheet, check again, rinse and repeat. 
So obviously this is a tedious process and I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me do the whole canvas because I need to do this across the whole top and the whole bottom. So I'm going to finish this off camera and then after I'm done addressing all of these little rivers and scraping over them and trying to get out all of the rivers and everything, release all of that trapped air, I will come back and show you how I am going to address all of those large puckers on the back of the canvas. So here you can see, this is one of the large puckers and you can see where the tape doesn't quite touch the canvas. So I'm just gonna make large slices across the canvas to release that air that's trapped underneath. That way, hopefully, when I go over it with the scraper, I can press all that air out of it. I've just grabbed a cover sheet here, since it's kind of in the middle of the canvas, and I'm gonna use the cover sheet so that my scraper doesn't stick, and I'm just kinda go over that section where that pucker is and try, again, pressing really firmly to try and get as much of that trapped air out from underneath as I can. Ooh, it looks better already. You can kind of see where the tape is now adhering to the canvas. So let's check the back. Here you can see on the back where that pucker is, that's what I need to get out. So flipping the canvas over, I also need to try and flatten both of those puckers from the back. You can sort of see it here. I'm gonna take my scraper and just go over it again, really firmly trying to flatten down the canvas so that it will adhere to where I made the cuts in the tape. That way everything kind of flattens out and I won't have any bumps or anything when I try to put drills on it. And then there's that second smaller pucker up here. I need to go over that as well. Again, using the scraper to just try and go over everything and get it all as flat as it can be. That way the canvas is adhering to the tape, the tape is adhering to the canvas, my drills will lay flat, and I'm all good to go. It's pretty late, so I'm going to pick this up again tomorrow. Okay, so I've done quite a bit of work on the canvas, and you can see, just looking at it here, you can't really see the big puckers that were in there. I can still feel them but they're not as big as they were. And I actually don't feel the one down at the bottom anymore. I thought I had three, but I can only find these two this time. So I do feel some air bubbles underneath where I have pulled up the cover and laid it back down, not completely firmly, but I'm gonna go back in. I don't know if you can see, if I hold it up, you can see a little bit better the shadows where this pucker is. And then there's another one down here. They are not as noticeable as they were, but they're still a little bit more lifted than I would like. I can press down all the way, but I'm gonna go cut the tape a little bit more in both of those places. So I need to flip this over and peel the adhesive backing back so that I can, the cover sheet back, so that I can get to the tape underneath. So you can see a little bit, I think, right here. Here is the, the biggest pucker where the tape is. And then right here is the second one. So I'm just going to grab my X-Acto knife again and I'm going to do a couple more slices. Instead of right down the middle, I'm gonna kind of slice on either side where I made the cut in the middle and see if that releases the tape a bit more. I will smooth the release paper down and then I will also smooth it from the back side. So you can see the pucker right here. I'm just gonna make a couple of scores along this side and see if I can get that pucker to let go a little bit more. And I'm cutting very lightly. I am not trying to cut through the canvas, just enough to kind of release that air that is trapped underneath the tape. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this pucker right here. All right, I think I've got enough of it released that I'm going to put the cover sheet back down, flip it back over, do some going over it with my brayer or my scraper and see if that helped. Okay, now that I've got everything laid back down, I'm gonna flip it over 
and see if I can just work those places where it was puckered to lay a little bit flatter. I think that helped. It's still not completely flat. I can still see it a little bit, but it's much better than it was. And I think once I get done with the rest of the canvas, what I will likely do, that one I can just barely see. So I don't know if you can see that second one. It was right here. You can barely see it anymore. You can still see this one a tad right here, but I think what I'm going to do is put some heavy books on it and let them set and kind of just press that because I think some of that is just tension memory from the fabric of it being puckered. And now that it's been released, it just needs to flatten out because when I push it, it goes flat. So I think I've cut the tape enough. I just need to put some weight on it to make sure that it will stay flat. I'm going to turn it around here because I thought I had a third pucker. I guess in the process of cutting all the other tape and cutting all the bubbles, I must have gotten rid of it. So I think those puckers are good for now. What I need to concentrate on is finishing all of the slicing that I still need to do on the rivers at all the edges. So you can see where the tape matches in the middle here, and you can see where I've got some of these rivers, but I have sliced them and I have gone over them with my little scraper as well. Even though you can still see them because you can see where the rivers were, you can see where I made the cuts. They are, when I run my fingers over them, flat. They're not bumpy like they were. Let me see if I can zoom in. I don't know if you can see on film. I hope you can see where I made some cuts right here, but when I run my finger over, my finger catches a little because, because the tape is sticky but where the actual rivers were is now flat. So when I go to lay my drills, I shouldn't have any problems. I still have some cutting to do. I've done most of this side on the bottom of the canvas here to get all the rivers out. I still have a bunch that I need to do up at the top. So far, I think this is working. Some things that I considered, and I'm just gonna keep working while I talk because I've got some over here that I didn't quite get to yesterday. Some things that I considered doing rather than doing this method, I'm actually very intrigued and it, had this canvas not been quite this large, I might have pursued it. I actually came across a couple of videos where people were basically ripping off the double-sided adhesive and then making it a poured glue canvas, buying like diamond dots or some kind of diamond painting adhesive and then putting it on with a sponge brush. You put on, the people I watched, I think Tiny Worlds of Wonder did a video, but there was also somebody else that I watched. Tiny Worlds of Wonder just did a section. The other person that I watched did like an entire 30 by 40 painting and just peeled off all the double-sided adhesive. The reason I didn't go that route, not only because this is so big, but you, if you're not careful, can stretch the canvas underneath, trying to peel off the adhesive. And because this one is so large, because I can't really replace it easily, I decided that I would go a different route, that I would try this first. And then if this didn't work, I could always try that. What somebody had suggested in one of the other videos that I was watching was that instead of trying to peel the whole section off at a time or doing a large section like Tiny Worlds of Wonder had done, was to just cut like two inch strips across through the tape and then just peel up that two inch strip, put on the, the glue. So it's almost like a poured glue canvas, then do another two inch strip, pour on the glue, cut off another two inch strip. And so if this hadn't worked, that was going to be the next thing that I tried. Not gonna lie, kind of glad this is working because the thought of having to try and peel all of the adhesive off a 100 by almost 70 well it's 100 by what i say 101 by 76 trying to peel all of the adhesive off of that did not sound fun and since i really just had it's not like i have rivers through the entire piece i may come across some in the middle that i can't quite see right now 
because it is so large, but I have taken care of the ones down here. I'll take care of the ones at the top. I will put some books on it, like I said, to take care of those two puckers in the middle, and then my canvas should be ready to go. I could also try ironing it, I suppose, to see if that would help, but I don't really think that I need to do that. I think putting the books on it where the puckers were will be enough assistance to get it to lay flat the way that I need it to, then my canvas will be ready to go. So I'm actually super happy with how this has worked out. I know the tape doesn't look really pretty because you can still see where the rivers were and of course you can see where I'm making the cuts, but once I get all the drills on it, you will never be able to tell. The other thing that I noticed while I was doing this is that some of these symbols are super dark. So like this whole bottom section down here with all the flowers and everything, and this section over here, up here is not too bad. There's some lighter greens and things, but down here there's like a lot of dark blues and everything. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to break out the light pad so that I can see what I'm doing. And of course I will finish washi taping both sides. I just did these bottom pieces so that I could kind of lay my hand since most of the rivers were here at the bottom and then again at the top, I just put the pieces here so that I wasn't constantly laying my hand in the tape. I'm trying to look here and see. I think I've gotten all the rivers that were here across this bottom section. And this is likely where I'm going to start diamond painting. So I think as long as I have this section good to go, like I said, I will probably leave it sitting here on the dining room table for another couple of days. I'll get some very heavy books and put books on top of where those two puckers were just to kind of get the canvas to relax a little bit now that I've released the tension from the tape. I may actually cover the whole thing with books. Well, not the whole thing. I'll cover where the two puckers are. I'll cover this section where I've had to cut the tape at the bottom and again at the top and just try to get everything to lay as flat as possible before I start working on it. Because I do have a lot of work ahead of me still, now that I have fixed this, to get rid of all the rivers and fix all the issues with the double-sided adhesive, I need to, one, I don't like using these uh, cover sheets. They're too big, I could just cut them. I don't like doing that. I would rather make some pretty cover sheets. And since I know how to make my own cover sheets, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go find some pretty roses to kind of go with the canvas here. Some pretty roses and make myself some rose cover sheets. And I will cover at least a small section, if not the whole thing with those. We'll see how tired I get of cutting release papers, but at least give myself maybe two rows of release papers to work with so I can start drilling and then two, I have to kit all of these colors up. Now that's something else that someone brought up and my husband actually thought of this too. Because of the mix up with the drills, and if you haven't seen that, go back and check out the unboxing of this. I have more colors than I need, which is great, but I know there's already one instance at least of where I don't have enough of a particular color. Because this one has less colors, I might need more of a particular color than I get in my the drills that were included. So I likely will be hitting up my spares, but that's okay. I have spares to pull from, and this is a big enough project and it's gonna take me long enough that if I need to order more drills, I can do that as well. I will likely just order them from DP with sparklers or something like that rather than trying to go through. Several of you mentioned that you know they should have a warranty diamond painting Deutschland I'm not gonna argue that they should, um, and if they offer a lifetime warranty that they should stand by it. I just, for my own personal painting here, I just don't wanna mess with it. I could contact them. I don't know whether they would honor the warranty after it's sitting in my closet for two years or not. It doesn't matter to me. I have spares to pull from. I can order some more drills if I need to. I don't think I'm going to need to, I think, Anything that I'm short, I think I'm gonna be able to make up through my spares, so that's good. Also, I'm gonna be pulling out some more ABs. Since this is also a Josephine wall and I bought a bunch of ABs for my Diana, I am going to go through my ABs. They are both round kits, and I'm gonna see what ABs I have left or that I've purchased in the interim 
between doing these two kits that I can use to kind of bling up this kit a little bit. I'm actually super happy with how this came out. Like I said, I know it doesn't look fantastic where I've cut all of these little slashes in the tape, but like I said, once I get the drills on it, you'll never be able to tell and it'll just be our little secret. So if you've ever had to work with double-sided adhesive and you've had these issues, have you done something different other than trying this cutting method? Has anybody out there tried the method of actually removing the double-sided adhesive? When I first started diamond painting, double-sided adhesive was a lot more common. I think 99.9% .9 of the time now when you buy a canvas, at least for me, this is literally the only double-sided adhesive canvas I have in my stash anymore. Nobody, even the budget companies, are using poured glue. Nobody is using the double-sided adhesive. I don't know if places on AliExpress are still using it or not. I know I see it on Instagram, but none of the kits that I have have the double-sided adhesive. Any other tips and tricks of working with it, if you'd like to share, leave a comment below and let me know. Also, did you think I'd be able to fix it? I, admittedly, I wasn't sure. The rivers didn't bother me at all. I wasn't sure about the two puckers, if I would be able to get them to lay flat enough, but I'm pretty happy with how they are right now. Like I said, when you flip it over, you can still see it, but I'm gonna put books on it and let the book set for at least a, a couple of days and then I will take them off. This is big enough that I could leave the books on it while I was working on it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So my next steps for this canvas are, like I said, to get myself some cover papers, pretty cover papers printed and put on here so I can get rid of kind of this ugly, just plain blue and white cover sheet. Also, that will let me kind of stop messing with smoothing out all of the air bubbles that get trapped because this is just one big piece. Then I can finish washi taping it, get my release papers on, put the books on it, let it sit, and then I can kit up my drills, which is likely going to take a while. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that because I imagine the kit up is going to take me a while. Even though there are not the 300 colors, there are 275 colors. And that means I kind of have to figure out what I'm doing for storage. So that's going to be something new that I get to share with you guys as well. I've got a lot of options for storage, but when I did my Diana, I just kind of had to cobble everything together with 250 colors and I was at the beginning of my diamond painting journey. I did not have enough storage. I knew this project was going to be coming, so hopefully I've planned far enough ahead that I've got it to a manageable storage solution. I also need to figure out a plan for how do I work with a diamond painting this large? How am I going to section it? How can I figure out how long it's gonna take? How long do I wanna give myself to finish it? Just, I know a canvas like this, 100 by 75 can be completely overwhelming to some people, but I want to share with you that it doesn't have to be that overwhelming. Yes, it is a big piece. Yes, it can be expensive, but it can be very, very beautiful if you find something that you absolutely love the image and make it work. I think that's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.